have Englishmen aboard. Would you be so good as to muster your men? As master of this ship, I'll stand for the impressment of American seamen. You have exactly three minutes before we blow you out of the water. Line up your men. Muster the crew. Hi, but I'm an American. I lived in Boston for over 20. One British, forever British. That's His Majesty's law. stand idly by while American sailors are dragged from their ships and impressed into British service, never to see their families or loved ones again. The ocean that washes these freedom-loving shores was meant to be free. God created it that way, and the right to sail upon it should be limited only by the skill and the daring and the men who venture upon its deep. But what is the situation today? At this very hour, a British fleet blurts outside our harbor, impressing our seamen, commandeering our cargoes. Gentlemen, I must interrupt to bring you a message of extreme importance from the Congress of the United States. As of yesterday, June 18th, 1812, between this country and the United Kingdom of Great Britain, a state of war exists. <laughs> I must ask you for the fastest ship out of sail. Ask Captain Marshall to come to my office, please. Yes. Marshall. Hello, Caleb. Thank you for coming, Jim. Colonel Rogers, this is Captain Marshall. How do you do, sir? Good evening, sir. The colonel rode all the way from New York. Rode, I flew. There was daylight between me and that saddle most of the way. Mr. Parsons tells me you're the master of a fast ship. Caleb should know. He built her. Jim, how soon could the Concord be made ready for the sea? 24 hours. Why? A group of French citizens have arranged to lend us 10 million in gold. Money sorely needed to build a fleet to fight the British. President Madison has ordered us to send a ship to La Havre to get it. Why don't the French deliver it to us? At the moment, France is not at war with England. This is a private loan subscribed by French citizens. Their government daren't offend the British by allowing a French ship to carry the gold. Can you do it? There's a British fleet sitting off Salem Harbor right now. And the French coast will be blockaded by the time you get there. I'm not worried about getting in, Colonel. It's getting back with 10 million in gold bullion. That's a big risk. It's a risk that must be taken, Jim. It can mean the difference between winning and losing the war. Now, what about it? We might be able to do it, with the help of one man. You better get the counsel in here before I mention his name. Jim! Jim Marshall! Well, it can't be, man. I, I heard you'd been sunk with all hands. I cried, man. The room was awash with my tears. Oh, ladies, allow me to present Captain Jim Marshall, who can carry more sail and in rougher weather than any master afloat. Don't forget who taught me, Ben. That's right, Jim. Teacher and pupil, eh? 
Yeah. You'd arrive in a minute earlier. There'd have been a girl for you. Suppose you scattered these seagulls from your rigging. I'd like to talk to you seriously. You'll have to go, ladies. He's going to scold me. You know, I didn't tell you before. It's a dark family secret, but uh, Captain Marshall is uh, really my grandfather. Now, say goodbye to him. Good night. Good night. Who do they remind you of, Jim? Nobody I know of. Why? Look again. Can't you see the likeness? To whom? Why, to Leslie. Who else? Clarice here has her eyes. Margot, see the fine nose and the brow? They're Leslie's. And Myrtle. The throat and shoulders. Identical. Good night, ladies. You still haven't forgotten her band? I forgot her four years ago when she left me. I only keep her portrait to remind me how well I've forgotten her. What do you want to see me about? We're at war, Ben. So that's what all that noise and shouting was about. They've commissioned my ship to run the British blockade. I can't do it without your help. I haven't had a deck under my feet for two years. Nobody wants to trust a ship to a man who's been cashiered from the Navy, even if it was the British Navy. Master of my own ship again. I bet the town council squealed when my name came up, didn't it? What did you tell him, Jim? That I know the tactics of His Majesty's Navy as well as Nelson himself? That and more, Ben. To be sure you did, Jim. Well, when do we sail? What's our destination? The Concorde's loading now. We leave at daybreak for La Havre. We're picking up something. To France? Is Leslie still there? Yes, she's in Paris. There might be a chance for you to see her, Ben. There's just one thing. You won't be going as ship's master. You'll have to sail as my first officer. I see. Well, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Under the circumstances, I must refuse. Ben, I'd have been proud to serve under you. But the council wouldn't hear of it. Remind the council for me that I was a captain at 22, the youngest commander of a ship in His Majesty's Navy. It's a little late for me to be taking first officer berths. Ben, this country gave you refuge when you needed it most. It needs your help now. You can't refuse. Very well, Jim. I'll go on two conditions. You give me time to see Leslie when I get to France, and I want the right to pick my own gun crew. We'll not get through this without a fight, you know. Permission granted, Mr. Baldridge. Thank you, Captain. We sail with the tide tomorrow night. Get your crew and stow your gear aboard. The crew's below. All I have to do is sober them up. As for my gear, I... First Officer Benjamin Wharton. Look, where are you? Sykes! Redlegs! Faversham! Hook your drunk. No, sir. The grog's not yet been brewed that can unsober the old hook. Line the men up. I want to talk to them. Aye, right, sir. All right, you men, on your feet. Mr. Redlegs! You're drunk. I'm real disappointed in you. All right, fall in over there. All right, you lovers, on your feet. The captain wants to talk. Get in. Get Master gunner and crew ready and able for duty, sir. It's a pleasure to see you can still enjoy yourselves, men. But now we have business to attend to. Business that'll take you off the beach for a while. <laughs> have them aboard the Concorde at Derby Wharf within an hour. And sober enough to meet their new commander, Captain Marshall. You're not going with us, Captain? I'm sailing as first officer in charge of gun crew. Any further questions? You're second in command, Captain? You heard me. You're in charge, Hook. Gear the men up and get them aboard. Aye, aye sir. All right, boys, to the ship. And then Miss Tardy will feel the weight of this. What's he up to? Uh, second in command. That's not like Walridge. And who is this goody two-shoes, Captain Marshall? Now, ain't you the suspicious one, Mr. Redlegs? Don't the captain always take good care of his old shipmates? I tell you, it don't add up straight. I say trust the captain. He makes more sense crazy drunk than most men does sane and sober. Something's fishy, and I don't mean the finny kind of. Blockade to run, and no mention of destination or cargo. 
And if the captain's got something up, he'll let us know sooner or later. In the meantime, stole that talk and turn to. <laughs> make of this construction yet? Why, ain't you never heard the captain speak of his submersible? Oh, yes, I have, but I thought it was the grog that was talking. You mean this wooden tub can travel under the water? Like a runaway mackerel, two men sits inside it and works these here propellers with foot pedals. They breathe through them long pipes. It's against nature, Oak. Wild seahorses couldn't drag me inside that devil's coffin. Sail underneath the water, indeed. Why, it's unchristian. Captain Marshall, morning's completed, sir. Bob couldn't be thicker if we'd ordered it. We mustn't lose this tide. Shove off. No lights to be shown, no bells to be sounded. We'll try and drift through them. Aye, sir. And Mr. Hackett, not a sound out of anyone. I'll log the first man jack that so much as whispers. They'll stand well off Cape Ann. That's a British ship, no doubt of it. Lee Helm, quarter point. Steady, sir. Mr. Hackett, pushed all men to shrouds, had them ready to make full sail when I give the word. Warn them to be silent. Every sound carries in this fog. Captain, there's a large ship approaching toward us just off the starboard bow. Elm hard down. Elm hard down. Sheets and braces there. Belay. We'll have to run for it, Ben. I know that ship. We're hopelessly outgunned. What about that underwater craft of yours? Oh, they'd be on us before we had time to launch it. I have an idea how to cripple her without a fight. She's directly abeam, about 100 yards. You'll hear her directly you're in the water. Make straight for the rudder. You can swim faster than she's moving. You'll be sure to wait for me, Captain. We'll send the bell once after the explosion. That'll do it. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you.
There's Red Lake now. Throw him a line. Stack at full sail. Force north. Lay her close. Eyes are... Thank you, Captain. Thank you for waiting for me. Take him below. See to his cover. Thank you. Jim. If I may say so, that was a stupid risk to take. Under the circumstances, I felt it was necessary. But the entire mission was at stake. You jeopardized the ship and its crew for one man. I gave my word. He risked his life. But this is war, man. Even war doesn't relieve us of our responsibilities to our fellow man. But let's leave it that way, shall we? Come on, below. We'll chart a course. What's she making? Fourteen knots. She's a fast one. You man can turn her. Anybody talk to Aldridge yet? No, why? The Whisperers were bound for France. Well, that's logical. A secret mission in wartime? Sailing without cargo? Don't you want to know why? Not specially. I know how to find out. How? Oh. The captain's cabin is directly below. Hang over the side and have a look. And I'll give you a whistle if anyone comes. Getting through the British fleet at the half, our biggest worry will be getting this gold bullion aboard. Can't hide ten million gold in your pockets, you know. Well, we'll worry about that when we come to it. Square with us well and good. But if he dukes us. Captain. What is this? If you two men want to see me, why don't you come to my cabin? Beg your pardon, Captain. It might look a bit suspicious. What with that Captain Marshall bobbing in and out? Oak and we knows our place. Don't we, Oak? That we does indeed, sir. Nothing like the Navy to teach a man his proper place. What are you two getting at? Hook and me has it figured like this, Captain. Should there be any trouble on the quarter deck before this voyage is finished, we'd like you to know whose side we're on. And that goes for the others and the gun crew, too. What makes you think there'll be trouble on the quarter deck? Two captains is bad luck for any ship, sir. And ten millions in gold. Anything can happen when there's gold aboard ship, sir. know about this. Only me and Red Legs, sir, that's all. If you mention this to anyone, I'll have you up for conniving at mutiny. Do you understand? You can trust us, sir. Never a whisper. Not even to my own mother. Why is the grave? Five millions. Five millions. <laughs> Divided by two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Eight. Oh. oh. Uh, stand away. Give him air. Can't you see the man sailing uncharted waters? Give him air to breathe in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. What is it you need, matey? Can I help you? Look, uh, lift up my feet. I'll need my toes to mathematic this out. Here, use these. And the hook. As good as five fingers any day. <laughs> I never mathematic in the millions before. 
All hands on deck, you lubber. Mate says all hands are off to take in sail. That's ordinary seaman's work. Let the ordinary seaman tend to it. I'll deliver your message to the mate. He'll have an answer for you, too. With a cat. Uh, we'll go aloft. It's best not to attract any attention to ourselves. Besides, we wouldn't want anything to happen to the ship now, would we, mateys? <laughs> <laughs> some of the crew to go ashore with you, sir? Captain Waldridge and I will manage by ourselves. If we're not back by Friday midnight, send as many crewmen as you can spare. Tell them to inquire at the mayor's house in La Havre. Aye, sir. Just the two of them to fetch all that gold? I can't figure it. Do you think we can trust Waldridge? The captain needs us. He can't take the ship without us. Don't worry, Red Legs. I'm not worried about Waldridge. It's that goody two-shoes, Captain Marshall. He may talk soft, but he's tough underneath. Wait he runs up against this, the hook will soften him. Aye. Any sign of him yet? Not a speck. 84 hours. They should have been back by now. Muster a longboat crew. We'll have to go to La Havre. That was the captain's orders. Take a couple of Waldridge's gunners. They'll come in handy if there's trouble. <laughs> Any Waldridge's gun crew here? <laughs> Mr. Potter, it's a high and mighty gun crew of Captain Walridge. They won't even associate with us common seamen. Won't even eat with us. Oh, they're a dainty lot. Well, where are they? As soon as they're relieved of duty, they jump below to gamble. Gamble? <laughs> what with? I've seen them bet a thousand gold on the turn of a card. They take it serious, too. Redlegs keeps an account of who's winning and who's losing. They must be getting into the grog. Andrews, go below. Fetch Hook and some of his men to man the longboat. Wishes to see me, Mr. Faversham? First, I'll double my wager. 5,000 gold sovereigns. Mark it down. 5,000 gold sovereigns. And now, Mr. Faversham, I'll double you. 10,000. What have I got to do me in the book? Your original share was 100,000. You're now down to uh, 50,000. 10,000 more. You can't do it. Why can't I? It's my goal. It was agreed that no man could gamble away more than half his share. Otherwise, he might lose interest in taking part in a small mutiny. I don't want to hear that ugly word spoke again. What makes you so sure we'll get the gold? for something, Mr. Andrews? Were you eavesdropping, Mr. Andrews? That's not nice. I didn't hear a thing. The hook here says you heard every word. We can't let him go. Let's cut him in. Would you like to come in with us, Mr. Andrews? Sure, sure. I'll go along with you. But look, the shares are so even. I'll have to mathematic them all over again. I won't talk. You can trust me. I won't say a word. What brought you down below? We're just thirsty. That's all. Drink. Drink! And now, Mr. Faversham, before we were so rudely interrupted, you was wagering what? It's your game, Hook. Yeah. You'll be washed overboard tonight. All hands on deck! Let's go. It's them. They're being overtaken. Hook, clear away a gun. I...
must be in the chests. Aye, the chests. Rig a hoist, get that boat aboard. Stow the anchor in the cable locker. Aye, sir. That was a close squeeze, ma'am. You all right? Get her below, Ben. My trunks, are they all right? The men will bring them aboard. The bag and make full sail. Set a course south by west. Stay close to the shoreline. Our friends may be back. Aye, sir. Next you see me, I shall be so beautiful, you won't recognize me. Excuse me. I'll need you on deck to help with the navigation. I'll be right up. If we stay close in, they may not spot us. It'll be a miracle if they don't. The coast's alive with British agents. I want to thank you, ma'am. We'd never reach the people we had to without your help. I regret having to bring you aboard. As soon as it's safe, we'll lower a longboat and have you return. <laughs> I expect Captain Waldridge hasn't had time to tell you, Mr. Marshall, but I'm not going ashore. I'm making the trip with you. That's impossible, ma'am. As soon as it's safe, we'll have... Jim, with the British squadron breathing down our necks, I think our first concern... Just a minute. Since when does Captain Waldridge take orders from his first officer? I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm in command of this ship. Not Captain Waldridge. On this voyage, I volunteered as first officer. Why didn't you tell me in Le Havre? Jim, if you put Leslie ashore, you'll have to put me ashore with her. I'll hold you by force if necessary. It will be necessary. You'll please get ready, ma'am. So the mighty Captain Waldridge is now taking orders from a schoolboy. Leslie, it was the only way I could get to see you. And what are the great new life we will have? On what? A first officer's pay? Go ahead, have a drink, Captain Waldridge. Have two. Drown your sorrows like a common seaman, but it won't wash down the lies you've told me. I did it because I love you. Was it love back there in La Havre when you talked like King Midas? Millions you had. Have another drink. Maybe it'll refresh your memory. Please, Leslie, you've said enough. Have I? For you, perhaps. Not for me. I'm getting off this boat and out of your life forever. Go ahead. This time I won't try to stop you. your trunks down for you, ma'am. Well, you can take them right back up again. I'm leaving. Didn't you hear me? I said take them back on deck. Aren't you going to open them up? You can trust us, ma'am. Close as that to Captain Waldridge we are. Get out of here before I have you both flogged. I wouldn't call if I was you, ma'am pretty throat. I'd hate to have it catch on the hook accidental-like. Let's open them up, Red Legs. We'll see for ourselves. You're insane, both of you. We're built. I knew it. A thousand years of the blackest luck. You must have brought it on board with you. Where is it? He wouldn't have sailed without it. I don't know what you're talking about. Where is what? The gold. Ten millions of it. The gold we made this blasted trip for. So that's what he was talking about. Then you do know about it. Of course. I thought it was only talk. If it's not in the trunks, where is it? Well, it, it must be on board. They got whatever they went ashore for. I heard them say so. Did you lose an anchor on the way across? What did you do with the one you brought aboard? Stowed in the forward locker. Can we see it? 
We can try, but it isn't a place for a lady to go. That anchors what I think it is. I can forget I'm a lady. You haven't shaved for weeks, but I think I love you both. Being a true seafaring man, anchors has always been my weakness. <laughs> Change course. West by south, quarter south. West by south, quarter south, sir. I'm sorry about Leslie, Ben. Everything happens for the best in this best of all possible worlds. Maybe she can join you later. Leslie will do what's best for Leslie. She's preparing to return to Paris now. Lights off the starboard bow, low down on the horizon. There goes another beacon. They've got us spotted, all right. They're signaling the British squadron. We better head south where there's plenty of room to run for it. Go below, Ben. Chart us a course. Keep us as close as you can to the shoreline. Maybe we can lose them by daybreak. Yes? Ben? Ben, I've looked all over the place for you. The first officer of a ship's a busy man. I'm sorry, Ben. I've hurt you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It was just a disappointment. We had such wonderful plans together. America. Won't you forgive me, Ben? Please. That's unimportant. I was wrong. I have no right to ask you to love a failure. I'll not hear you say that. You're not a failure. You're my captain. Oh, we've had such wonderful dreams and plans for the future. I want to help you make those dreams come true. It's too late. Marshall's going to put you ashore at the first safe moment. <sighs> Darling, you underestimate women. Captain Marshall's at a disadvantage. Now, if you were captain of this ship, and I asked you, babe, prettily not to put me ashore. Could you refuse me? Your prisoner has escaped, Captain. Not my prisoner. Only my guest, ma'am. Oh, is it American politeness to order their guests from the house? Set them down where their enemies can destroy them? The responsibility of this ship, its crew, and a very important mission are in my hands. I have to guard against all hazards. Am I such a hazard? The ship in wartime is hardly the place for a woman. A woman's place in war or out is beside the man she loves. Have you ever loved anyone, Captain? So much so that every day, every hour spent apart from that person isn't living at all? I'm very happy for Ben's sake that you've learned to care for him so deeply. He went to pieces pretty badly when you left him. Four years ago. Because I was wrong four years ago that I want to be right this time. He needs me desperately. You're his friend. It's in your power to help him. He started to drink already. I'll arrange for you to join him in America when the war is over. Beyond that, there's nothing I can do. Gun. Left, quarter point. Steady, sir. Left, quarter point. She's the Aurora, fastest ship in the Channel Fleet. It couldn't do worse. We outrun it? In this wind, not a chance. Clear the decks for action. General quarters there. Aye, sir. Come on, take a look at the chart. We can't reach open sea. We've got ten hours of daylight ahead of us. Got our ring. 
Look here, Jim. Look at this reef. Tucson Shoals, it's called. It's about four miles south of us. We're here. Twelve years ago, the ship I commanded struck bottom here in open water, part of an uncharted reef. I checked every Admiralty chart. They showed 12 fathoms, but I hit bottom at three. I suggest that we head for the shoals, then turn suddenly as if striking out to sea. The Aurora will cut across to intercept us. Our only hope is if we get through and she sticks on the reef. Will the Aurora draw enough water to strike bottom? Well, a ship of her class draws about 18 feet, probably more. We're drawing less than 12. We've got to risk it. I'll have a leadsman take a sound. Hey, beautiful and charming guest who once and for all dispels the ancient lie that a woman aboard ship brings bad luck. Here, here. I accept your gallant tribute, Captain, in the name of all women. To the success of our venture. Now it's my turn. But instead of a toast, it becomes my unpleasant duty to reprimand Captain Marshall. Today he did a very foolish thing. At the risk of losing his ship and his own life, he saved mine. Captain Marshall, the action you took today to save one crew member was unwarranted. However, all I can say is thank you, Jim. The reprimand is acknowledged, but the thanks are out of order, Ben. You'd have done the same for me. Would I? I wonder. Ben, there may be some doubt in your mind, but believe me, there's none in mine. I'm afraid that's me. If you'll excuse me, I'll leave you two to carry on. You've grown 
very fond of Captain Marshall, haven't you, Ben? Why not? He reminds me of my youth. Once I, too, had plans for the future. The Admiralty used to say I'd command a fleet one day. That was yesterday. I'm thinking of tomorrow, a lot of tomorrows, for you and me. Here's to tomorrow. You mustn't let friendship interfere with your plans. You mentioned plans once before. Just what plans are you referring to? Oh, don't be elusive, my darling. All those golden promises you made to me in Paris. I'm going to hold you to them. Didn't you think it was just a little bit strange that I didn't go ashore? I found out about the anchor. Who told you? Your Mr. Hook isn't as secretive as you are. I'll stretch his neck for this. Let's not be hasty. We may need his help. Leslie, I admit I did consider such a plan, but I'm not going through with it. What made you change your mind? Have you grown soft? I've grown tired of living under a cloud. Being known in every port as the captain who stole a ship's payroll to pay a woman's debts. This voyage will give me a new chance. The United States trusts me. Once back in Salem, I'll have recognition. We can start a new life there. Are oh, you blind? Recognition of who? Captain Marshall's in command of this ship. He's the hero of this mission. You're only the first officer. You'll get everything. You'll get nothing. There's honor enough for everyone. Jim will share with me. I know he will. Haven't you enough sense to know when you're being used? Could he have succeeded without you? Who saved his ship for him back there when the British had him trapped? And who saved my life? Was it worth saving then? You said yourself you couldn't live without me. Well, I can't live without the things that make a woman's life worth living. Take your choice, Ben. Ten million in gold and me, or nothing. It's madness. The only mad thing would be to give up without trying. You had a plan once, you must go through with it. The fat's in the fire now, Ben. The hook has told the others they're awaiting your commands. It's too late to stop them now. If we should fail, hanging isn't a pretty death, my Leslie. We've waited too long for such a chance. To talk of failure now. I'll go find her. We'll be at the Azores tomorrow night. I say we take the ship right there. We still have most of the ocean to cross. Should we meet a British ship or run into a gale, we'd be short-handed. I don't like this stalling, Captain. And I don't like this interference. Either we do it my way or not at all. Uh, what's your plan, Captain? We'll proceed this way. Marshall will sail from the Azores, following this route. At this point, he'll change course and pick up the northeast trades to Salem. There's only one logical place to take over the ship. This is it. That makes good sense to me. How are you disposing of the anchor? We'll melt it down and use brokers in Havana. What happens to Captain Marshall? You leave Marshall to me. Anything else? Come on, Hook. We've stood with Captain Warridge before. I stand with him now. You better do the same. Agreed. Thank you, Watch. Fifty miles from the Bahamas. We better change course and proceed north. I'll hold our present course till midnight, then change. We've a stout wind with us. Let's not lose it. Five days we'll be off Salem Harbor. Uh, it'd be good to be back, Ben. Yeah. You know, something's been bothering me. What's that? Well, you've done your share, Ben. It should have been a joint command. When we ride into Salem Harbor, that's the way I want it to be. I can't accept. I insist, Ben. Excuse me, Captain. The pivot's jammed on one of the deck guns. Maybe you better have a look at it. I won't have it any other way, Ben. See how you feel about it tomorrow. Where's she jammed? Nothing's jammed, sir. Everything's shipshape, Captain. We're nearing the Bahamas. When do we change our course? Eight bells. It'll be dark tonight. What's the signal? I'll give it to you. Give it to us now, Captain. At eight bells, I take the watch. That's the signal. Good enough. Ben? Leave me be, Leslie. You've only got a few minutes. I know. Well, what are you worrying about? 
the men are well armed, it'll go like clockwork. I know. You won't be sorry, Ben. With this ship, we can sail to the Far East, to Singapore. With the gold, we can buy ourselves a new future. One night's work and it's all ours, Ben. Let's go. Captain, quick, there's a mutiny. All the course. Half east. Half east. ship's offices. Get them out of here, Ben. Please. You heard the lady. Back to the folks over here. Go on. You too. Me? I'm second mate now. You are, are you? First officer Hook, your humble servant, your ladyship. I don't think your men impressed the Lady Hook. They're good boys, Captain. Just a little excited, that's all. I'll keep them under control. Chuck the grog overboard. I want every man sober. And collect all the firearms and lock them back in the armory. Rig a flogging post, and the first man that breaks an order gets 20 lashes. Hop to it. Aye, sir. What have you done with Marshall? He's in irons. And the crew? They're in irons, too, down in the hole. What are you going to do with them later? When we get to Havana, I'll release them. Marshal? You'll get the same treatment as the others. He's not the same as the others. They've only lost their freedom for a little while. He's lost his ship he'll never forget. Are you suggesting I kill him? If you let him live, he'll kill you. Mm, we have to find us first. We'll be on the other side of the world. He'll never give up until he does find you. You know that as well as I do. I'll take my chances. Hook and the others, they're not squeamish. If you don't kill him, I think they will. Just 
check in to see that Captain Marshall was comfortable, sir. Go ahead, Ben. Get it over with. What are you waiting for? I want no witnesses. There's a compass. You're 50 miles from shore, west, northwest. There's a plank, there's a paddle. You've one chance in a thousand. Take it. From now on, we're even. You just hang yourself, Ben. Forever having doubted you, Captain.
to be near Buford, Georgia. How long? Oh, most a week now. I've been unconscious all that time. Do you rouse and rave a little and fall asleep? We notified the Navy, like you said. Now, now, lad. You gotta rest. You're in no condition to move. Hey, Pa, they're coming! Are you Captain James Marshall? Yes. The American ship Concord? Yes, sir. I have orders to bring you before a board of inquiry in the shortest time possible. Captain, while we argue, Waldridge is slipping away with the gold. I've got my orders, Captain Marshall. Are you suggesting that I disobey them? I'm suggesting you save ten million in gold. There's only one place Waldridge can dispose of it. Brokers in Havana. And it's probably there already. You'd have to stop at some island in order to melt the anchor down. But he's had a week on us. Half that time would be spent melting the gold down. Besides, his crew is short-handed. If we set about now, we can intercept him. What do you think, Mr. Stone? Washington's been burned by the British. We need that gold desperately. What have we got to lose, sir? I beg of you, set about now. It may mean the winning of the war. Set a new course. South by a quarter west. Aye, sir. That'll bring her up at Havana. Thank you, sir. <laughs> three days ago off Lemb Island. Direct on course to Havana. Havana's a two-day voyage. We can never overtake her. No, there's still a chance. The British man of war, Britannica, is guarding the harbor to Havana. She's an 80-gunner. Waldridge can never get past her. There are dozens of small bays all along the Cuban coast she can slip into. What do you think Waldridge will do? Lemba. Lemba's uninhabited. A good anchorage. An ideal place for him to melt the anchor down unobserved. Well, that's as good a guess as any. Mr. Stone, set course for Lemba. Aye, sir. When did you see this big ship off Lemba Island? Only yesterday. I got her name, too. What was it? The sea spray. First thing Waldridge would do would be to change her name. Did you board her? They wouldn't let me board her. I tried to sell them some fish, but all they wanted was grog. Was there an Englishman among them? No, but when they found out I had no grog, they cussed like a pack of pirates. Especially a big fellow with a hook on his arm. Oh, he had a mean tongue. That's the Concord, all right. Have will be a full moon tonight. It's going to be difficult to take her by surprise. May not be as difficult as we think. How much grog have you got aboard? That's the last of them. See the girl stoked below proper. The gold's all aboard, Captain. We'll be shipshape in about an hour. Why didn't you put that fire out? 
No, it got too big. It'll burn itself out. The Britannica's in these waters. I want no chances taking she may spot us. Put the fire out. We'll be out of here by eight bells, Captain. Not in this calm. We won't have a breeze until morning tide. What's another night with ten million in a hold? I want a strong hand kept on the men. Don't let up on the discipline. Post a double watch on deck and on the prisoners. What about those prisoners, Captain? How long are we going to carry them? We'll drop them outside of Anna Harbor. We could drop them here. That's an order. Where'd you get the cheroot, Hook? Compliments to the captain. Yes, when he wasn't looking. You insinuating I'm a thief? Why, no, Hook. Everyone knows you've got a fine character. We're all fine characters. Yeah. You wait till we split up our shares. I'll show you how a gentleman lives. Hook! That fisherman is hauled to again. Tell him to go sink himself. Says he's got grog. Grog? Keep a weather eye out for the captain. What are you selling this time? You said you wanted grog. It's real. Come on up. Oh, no. I want my money first. And none of those lead coins either. Will you take gold? Ah, gold's my pleasure. Fetch him an ingot, a small one. Against captain's orders, Hook. Uh, who's going to miss one small ingot? Get going. thrown overboard the night we took the ship. You must have hidden some. Your men. 
Call off your men or I'll blow this ship all over the ocean. Take the men above. Aye, sir. Unless I have your word, Leslie and I will be set free in the Bahamas. I can't do that, Ben. You have five seconds to save this ship, its crew and cargo. Ben, if you'll surrender, I promise you that Leslie will go free. No charges will be brought against her. Ben, let me go free. We don't both have to die. Your five seconds are up. But wait, Ben! Have you forgotten? We were going to be together always in everything. You don't want to leave me now, do you? Oh, please, Ben, if you love me. I do. Too much to part with you, my darling. Oh, Ben, please let me live. Please, please, I want to live, Ben. Captain Marshall! The British! The Britannica, sir. She's driving off the Juniper and blockading the harbor. She'll be sailing in to get us next. Did you hear, Ben? A British ship, we're safe. How long before she gets to us? We're in shallow water now, but the tide's coming fast. I'd say about three hours. You may as well surrender, Captain Marshall. Have the crew stand by, ready to scuttle the ship. Aye, sir. No, no! The British will never take my ship or its cargo. Leslie! Potter, get the men off the ship as soon as you can. Aye, sir. Hi, Captain. Did you give Captain Marshall my message? Hi, Captain. Well, why doesn't he come? He'd be kind of busy, Captain. But don't worry. He won't leave you down here when he sinks the ship. But if you get him before it's too late, he may not have to sink her. Did you tell him what I said, that he may not have to scuttle? Here he be. Tell him yourself. Oh, Jim! Jim! Did the guard tell you? You've got one chance. One chance in a hundred to save your ship. I can't make any deals with you, Ben. Well, this time you can't help yourself. That submersible on deck, it was made for an emergency like this. If you can get it in operation while it's still dark, there's a chance you can knock out the Britannica. We haven't got anybody to run it. You've got me, Captain Marshall. You can't do it without me. One chance in a hundred, but if it succeeds, you've saved your ship. Not to mention ten million in gold bullion. What do you say, Jim? Guard, open up. Push us along at about two knots. This valve will let in enough water ballast to keep us a few feet under the surface. We have to breathe through these two air vents. We'll make contact with the Britannica's hull. Light the fuse in this torpedo, ram it into the hull, then pedal backwards for our lives. How far can we get before she blows? About a hundred feet. Doesn't give us much leeway. It's enough. It'll have to be. Lower the hatch. I calls it. I'm afraid you're right. We should make contact with the Britannica in about 17 minutes. We'll have to submerge for the rest of the way, raise the hatch and get a fix on our direction. Torpedo.
What's our distance? About 500 feet. Watch the compass and keep us on course. We should reach the Britannica in 120 seconds. Still headed to midships. Stand by, we'll make contact any second. Captain Waldridge died in the course of duty. Aye, sir. Aye. Thank you. He deals with you, Ben. This time you can't help yourself. That submersible on deck, it was made for an emergency like this. If you can get it in operation while it's still dark, there's a chance you can knock out the Britannica. We haven't got anybody to run it. You've got me, Captain Marshall. You can't do it without me. One chance in a hundred, but if it succeeds, you've saved your ship. Not to mention ten million in gold bullion. What do you say, Jim? Guard, open up. along at about two knots. This valve will let in enough water ballast to keep us a few feet under the surface. We have to breathe through these two air vents. We'll make contact with the Britannica's hull. Light the fuse in this torpedo, ram it into the hull, then pedal backwards for our lives. How far can we get before she blows? About 100 feet. Doesn't give us much leeway. It's enough. 
It'll have to be. Lower the hatch. And I calls it. I'm afraid you're right. We should make contact with the Britannica in about 17 minutes. We'll have to submerge for the rest of the way, raise the hatch, and get a fix on our direction. Set the torpedo. Where's she jammed? Nothing's jammed, sir. Everything's shipshape, Captain. We're nearing the Bahamas. When do we change our course? Eight bells. It'll be dark tonight. What's the signal? I'll give it to you. Give it to us now, Captain. At eight bells, I take the watch. That's the signal. Good enough. Ben? Leave me be, Leslie. You've only got a few minutes. I know. Well, what are you worrying about? The men are well armed. It'll go like clockwork. I know. You won't be sorry, Ben. With this ship, we can sail to the Far East. To Singapore. With the gold, we can buy ourselves a new future. One night's work and it's all ours, Ben. Hurry, Ben. Let's go. Captain, quick, there's a mutiny. All the course. Half east. Half east. Kingdom of Great Britain, a state of war exists. Mr. Parsons, I must ask you for the fastest ship out of sail. Ask Captain Marshall to come to my office, please. Yes. Okay, 
Thank you for coming, Jim. Colonel Rogers, this is Captain Marshall. How do you do, sir? Good evening, sir. The Colonel rode all the way from New York. Rode, I flew. There was daylight between me and that saddle most of the way. Mr. Parsons tells me you're the master of a fast ship. Caleb should know. He built her. Jim, how soon could the Concord be made ready for the sea? 24 hours. Why? A group of French citizens have arranged to lend us 10 million in gold. Money is only needed to build a fleet to fight the British. President Madison has ordered us to send a ship to Le Havre to get it. Why don't the French deliver it to us? Well, at the moment, France is not at war with England. This is a private loan subscribed by French citizens. Their government daren't offend the British by allowing a French ship to carry the gold. Can you do it? There's a British fleet sitting off Salem Harbor right now. And the French coast will be blockaded by the time you get there. I'm not worried about getting in, Colonel. It's getting back with 10 million in gold bullion. That's a big risk. It's a risk that must be taken, Jim. It can mean the difference between winning and losing the war. Now, what about it? We might be able to do it with the help of one man. You better get the counsel in here before I mention his name. You've been sunk with all hands. I cried, man. The room was awash with my tears. Oh, ladies, allow me to present Captain Jim Marshall, who can carry more sail and in rougher weather than any master of foot. Don't forget who taught me, Ben. That's right, Jim. Teacher and pupil, eh? You drive minute there. Yeah, there's been a girl for you. Suppose you scattered these seagulls from your rigging. I'd like to talk to you seriously. You have to go, ladies. He's going to scold me. You know, I didn't tell you before, it's a dark family secret, but uh, Captain Marshall is uh, really my grandfather. Now say goodbye to him. What is this? If you two men want to see me, why don't you come to my cabin? Beg your pardon, Captain. It might look a bit suspicious. What with that Captain Marshall bobbing in and out? Who can we knows our place? Don't we, Oak? That we does indeed, sir. Nothing like the Navy to teach a man his proper place. What are you two getting at? Who can me as a figure like this, Captain? Should there be any trouble on the quarter deck before this voyage is finished, we'd like you to know whose side we're on. And that goes for the others in the gun crew, too. What makes you think there'll be trouble on the quarter deck? Two captains is bad luck for any ship, sir. And ten millions in gold. Anything can happen when there's gold aboard ship, sir. How many of you know about this? Only me and Red Legs, sir, that's all. If you mention this to anyone, I'll have you up for conniving at mutiny. Do you understand? You can trust us, sir. Never a whisper. Not even to my own mother. Quiet as the grave. Five millions. Five millions. <laughs> Divided by two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Eight. Oh. oh. Uh, stand away. Give him air. Can't you see the man sailing uncharted waters? Give him air to breathe in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. What is it you need, matey? Can I help you? Look, uh, lift up my feet. I'll need my toes to mathematic this out. Here, use these. And the hook. As good as five fingers any day. <laughs> I never mathematics in the millions before. All hands on deck, you lubbers. Mate says all hands are off to take in sail. That's ordinary seaman's work. Let the ordinary seaman tend to it. I'll deliver your message to the mate. He'll have an answer for you, too. With a cat. Uh, we'll go aloft. It's best not to attract any attention to ourselves. Besides, we wouldn't want anything to happen to the ship now, would we, mateys? <laughs> <laughs>
You sure you don't want some of the crew to go ashore with you, sir? Captain Waldridge and I will manage by ourselves. If we're not back by Friday midnight, send as many crewmen as you can spare. Tell them to inquire at the mayor's house in La Havre. Aye, sir. Just the two of them to fetch all that gold? I can't figure it. You think we can... Maybe we can lose them by daybreak. Yes? Ben? Ben, I've looked all over the place for you. The first officer of a ship's a busy man. I'm sorry, Ben, I've hurt you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It was just a disappointment. We had such wonderful plans together for America. Won't you forgive me, Ben? Please. That's unimportant. I was wrong. I have no right to ask you to love a failure. I'll not hear you say that. You're not a failure. You're my captain. Oh, we've had such wonderful dreams and plans for the future. I want to help you make those dreams come true. It's too late. Marshall's going to put you ashore at the first safe moment. <sighs> Darling, you underestimate women. Captain Marshall's at a disadvantage. Now, if you were captain of this ship, and I asked you very prettily not to put me ashore, could you refuse me? Prisoners escaped, Captain. Not my prisoner. Only my guest, ma'am. Oh, is it American politeness to order their guests from the house? Set them down where their enemies can destroy them? The responsibility of this ship, its crew, and a very important mission are in my hands. I have to guard against all hazards. Am I such a hazard? The ship in wartime is hardly the place for a woman. A woman's place in war or out is beside the man she loves. Have you ever loved anyone, Captain? So much so that every day, every hour spent apart from that person isn't living at all. I'm very happy for Ben's sake that you learned to care for him so deeply. He went to pieces pretty badly when you left him. Four years ago. Because I was wrong four years ago that I want to be right this time. He needs me desperately. You're his friend. It's in your power to help him. He started to drink already. I'll arrange for you to join him in America when the war is over. Beyond that, there's nothing I can do. Hello, ho! Where are we? Very fine on the starboard quarter, sir. She's a big one. She's coming fast. Looks like a 74 gun. Left quarter point. Steady, sir. Left quarter point. She's the Aurora, fastest ship in the Channel Fleet. It couldn't be worse. We outrun it? In this wind, not a chance. Bill takes for action. General Quarter's there. Aye, sir. Come on, take a look at the chart. Not even to my own mother. Quiet as the grave. Five millions. Five millions. <laughs> Divisor by two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Eight. Oh, oh. Uh, stand away. Give him air. Can't you see the man sailing uncharted waters? Give him air to breathe in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. What is it you need, matey? Can I help you? Look, uh, lift up my feet. I'll need my toes to mathematic this out. Here, yeah, use these. And the hook. Good as five fingers any day. <laughs> I never mathematics in the millions before. All hands on deck, you lubbers. Mate says all hands are off to take in sail. That's ordinary seaman's work. Let the ordinary seaman tend to it. I'll deliver your message to the mate. He'll have an answer for you, too. With a cat. Uh, we'll go aloft. It's best not to attract any attention to ourselves. Besides, we wouldn't want anything to happen to the ship now, would we, mateys? <laughs> <laughs> You sure you don't want
want some of the crew to go ashore with you, sir? Captain Waldridge and I will manage by ourselves. If we're not back by Friday midnight, send as many crewmen as you can spare. Tell them to inquire at the mayor's house in La Havre. Aye, sir. Just the two of them to fetch all that gold? I can't figure it. You think we can trust Waldridge? The captain needs us. He can't take the ship without us. Don't worry, Red Wings. I'm not worried about Waldridge. It's that goody two-shoes, Captain Marshall. He may talk soft, but he's tough underneath. Wait till he runs up against this. The hook will soften him. Aye. Any sign of him yet? Not a speck. 84 hours. They should have been back by now. Muster a longboat crew. We'll have to go to La Havre. That was the captain's orders. Take a couple of Waldridge's gunners. They'll come in handy if there's trouble. Any <laughs> Walridge's gun crew here? <laughs> Mr. Potter, it's a high and mighty gun crew of Captain Walridge. They won't even associate with us common seamen. Won't even eat with us. Oh, they're a dainty lot. Well, where are they? As soon as they're relieved of duty, they jump below to gamble. Gamble? <laughs> what with? I've seen them bet a thousand gold on the turn of a card. They take it serious, too. Redlegs keeps an account of who's winning and who's losing. They must be getting into the grog. Andrews, go beat. Why, it's unchristian. Got Marshal? Loading's completed, sir. Bob couldn't be thicker if we'd ordered it. We mustn't lose this tide. Shove off. No lights to be shown, no bells to be sounded. We'll try and drift through them. Aye, sir. And Mr. Hackett, not a sound out of anyone. I'll log the first man jack that so much as whispers. <laughs> They'll stand well off Cape Ann. That's a British ship, no doubt of it. Lee Helm, quarter point. Steady, son. Mr. Hackett, post all men to shrouds, heading ready to make full sail when I give the word. Warn them to be silent. Every sound carries in this fog. Captain, there's a large ship approaching toward us just off the starboard bow. Elm hard down. Elm hard down. Sheets and braces there. Belay. We'll have to run for it, Ben. I know that ship. We're hopelessly outgunned. What about that underwater craft of yours? Oh, they'd be on us before we had time to launch it. I have an idea how to cripple her without a fight. She's directly abeam, about 100 yards. You'll hear her directly you're in the water. Make straight for the rudder. You can swim faster than she's moving. You'll be sure to wait for me, Captain. We'll send the bell once after the explosion. That'll do it. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you.
on aboard. Will you be so good as to muster your men? As master of this ship, I'll stand for the impressment of American seamen. You have exactly three minutes before we blow you out of the water. Line up your men. Muster the crew. Hi, but I'm an American. I live in Boston for over 20. Born British, forever British. That's His Majesty's law. stand idly by while American sailors are dragged from their ships and impressed into British service, never to see their families or loved ones again. The ocean that washes these freedom-loving shores was meant to be free. God created it that way, and the right to sail upon it should be limited only by the skill and the daring and the men who venture upon its deep. But what is the situation today? At this very hour, a British fleet blurts outside our harbor, impressing our seamen, commandeering our cargoes. Gentlemen. On deck, Captain Quick, there's a mutiny. Hold a course. Half east. Half east. ship's offices. Get them out of here, Ben. Please. You heard the lady. Back to the folks over here. Go on. You too. Me? I'm second mate now. You are, are you? First officer Hook, your humble servant, your ladyship. I don't think your men impressed the Lady Hook. They're good boys, Captain. Just a little excited, that's all. I'll keep them under control. Chuck the grog overboard. I want every man sober. And collect all the firearms and lock them back in the armory. Rig a flogging post, and the first man that breaks an order gets 20 lashes. Hop to it. Aye, sir. What have 
done with Marshall? He's in irons. And the crew? They're in irons, too, down in the hole. We'll have to submerge for the rest of the way, raise the hatch and get a fix on our direction. Set the torpedo. What's our distance? About 500 feet. Watch the compass and keep us on course. We should reach the Britannica in 120 seconds. Still headed to midships. Stand by, we'll make contact any second.
Where am I? You've been near Buford, Georgia. How long? Oh, most a week now. I've been unconscious all that time. Do you rouse and rave a little and fall asleep? We notified the Navy, like you said. Now, now, lad. You gotta rest. Right, but I'm an American. I lived in Boston for over 20. Born British, forever British. That's His Majesty's law. stand idly by while American sailors are dragged from their ships and impressed into British service, never to see their families or loved ones again. The ocean that washes these freedom-loving shores was meant to be free. God created it that way, and the right to sail upon it should be limited only by the skill and the daring of the men who venture upon its deep. But what is the situation today? At this very hour, a British fleet flirts outside our harbor, impressing our seamen, commandeering our cargoes. Gentlemen, I must interrupt to bring you a message of extreme importance from the Congress of the United States. As of yesterday, June 18th, 1812, between this country and the United Kingdom of Great Britain, a state of war exists. <laughs> I must ask you for the fastest ship out of sail. Ask Captain Marshall to come to my office, please. Yes. Marshall? Hello, Caleb. Thank you for coming, Jim. Colonel Rogers, this is Captain Marshall. How do you do, sir? Good evening, sir. The colonel rode all the way from New York. Rode, I flew. There was daylight between me and that saddle most of the way. Mr. Parsons tells me you're the master of a fast ship. Caleb should know. He built her. Jim, how soon could the Concord be made ready for the sea? 24 hours. Why? A group of French citizens have arranged to lend us 10 million in gold. Unless I have your word, Leslie and I will be set free in the Bahamas. I can't do that, Ben. You have five seconds to save this ship, its crew, and cargo. Ben, if you'll surrender, I promise you that Leslie will go free. No charges will be brought against her. Ben, let me go free. We don't both have to die. Your five seconds are up. But wait, Ben! Have you forgotten? We were going to be together always in everything. You don't want to leave me now, do you? Oh, please, Ben, if you love me. I do. Too much to part with you, my darling. Oh, Ben, please let me live. Please, please, I want to live, Ben. Captain Marshall! The British! The Britannica, sir. She's driving off the Juniper and blockading the harbor. She'll be sailing in to get us next. Did you hear, Ben? A British ship, we're safe! How long before she gets to us? We're in shallow water now, but the tide's coming fast. I'd say about three hours. You may as well surrender, Captain Marshall. Have the crew stand by, ready to scuttle the ship. Aye, sir. No, no! The British will never take my ship or its cargo. Leslie! Potter, get the men off the ship as soon as you can. Aye, sir. Guard! Guard! 
Hi, Captain. Did you give Captain Marshall my message? Hi, Captain. Well, why doesn't he come? He'd be kind of busy, Captain. But don't worry. He won't leave you down here when he sinks the ship. But if you get him before it's too late, he may not have to sink her. Did you tell him what I said, that he may not have to scuttle? Here he be. Tell him yourself. Oh, Jim. Jim. Did the guard tell you? You've got one chance. One chance in a hundred to save your ship. I can't make any deals with you, Ben. Well, this time you can't help yourself. That submersible on deck, it was made for an emergency like this. If you can get it in operation while it's still dark, there's a chance you can knock out the Britannica. We haven't got anybody to run it. You've got me, Captain Marshall. You can't do it without me. One chance in a hundred, but if it succeeds, you've saved your ship. Not to mention ten million in gold bullion. What do you say, Jim? Guard, open up. Master gunner and crew ready and able for duty, sir. It's a pleasure to see you can still enjoy yourselves, men. But now we have business to attend to. Business that'll take you off the beach for a while. <laughs> have them aboard the Concorde at Derby Wharf within an hour. And sober enough to meet their new commander, Captain Marshall. You're not going with us, Captain? I'm sailing as first officer in charge of gun crew. Any further questions? You're second in command, Captain? You heard me. You're in charge, Hook. Gear the men up and get them aboard. Aye, aye sir. All right, boys, to the ship. And then Miss Tardy will feel the weight of this. What's he up to? Uh, second in command. That's not like Walridge. And who is this goody two-shoes, Captain Marshall? Now, ain't you the suspicious one, Mr. Redlegs? Don't the captain always take good care of his old shipmates? I tell you, it don't add up straight. I say trust the captain. He makes more sense crazy drunk than most men does sane and sober. Something's fishy, and I don't mean the finny kind. A blockade to run, and no mention of destination or cargo. If the captain's got something up, he'll let us know sooner or later. In the meantime, stow that talk and turn to. Of this contraption here. Why, ain't you never heard the captain speak of his submersible? Oh, yes, I have, but I thought it was the grog that was talking. You mean this wooden tub can travel under the water? Like a runaway mackerel, two men sits inside it and works these here propellers with foot pedals. They breathe through them long pipes. It's against nature, Oak. Wild seahorses couldn't drag me inside that devil's coffin. Sail underneath the water, indeed. Why, it's unchristian. Captain Marshall, loading's completed, sir. Bob couldn't be thicker if we'd ordered it. We mustn't lose this tide. Shove off. No lights to be shown, no bells to be sounded. We'll try and drift through them. Aye, sir. And Mr. Hackett, not a sound out of anyone. I'll log the first man jack that so much as whispers. Hang yourself, Ben.
beg your pardon for ever having doubted you, Captain. set free in the Bahamas. I can't do that, Ben. You have five seconds to save this ship, its crew, and cargo. Ben, if you'll surrender, I promise you that Leslie will go free. No charges will be brought against her. Ben, let me go free. We don't both have to die. Your five seconds are up. But wait, Ben. Have you forgotten? We were going to be together always in everything. You don't want to leave me now, do you? Oh, please, Ben, if you love me. I do. Too much to part with you, my darling. Oh, Ben, please let me live. Please, please, I want to live, Ben. Captain Marshall! It's Master of 
this ship on stand for the impressment of American seamen. You have exactly three minutes before we blow you out of the water. Line up your men. Muster the crew. Right, but I'm an American. I lived in Boston for over 20. One British, forever British. That's His Majesty's law. stand idly by while American sailors are dragged from their ships and impressed into British service, never to see their families or loved ones again. The ocean that washes these freedom-loving shores was meant to be free. God created it that way, and the right to sail upon it should be limited only by the skill and the daring and the men who venture upon its deep. But what is the situation today? At this very hour, a British fleet lurks outside our harbor, impressing our seamen, commandeering our cargoes. Gentlemen, I must interrupt to bring you a message of extreme importance from the Congress of the United States. As of yesterday, June 18th, 1812, between this country and the United Kingdom of Great Britain, a state of war exists. <laughs> I must ask you for the fastest ship out of sail. Ask Captain Marshall to come to my office, please. Yes, sir. Oh, down. Captain Marshall? Hello, Caleb. Thank you for coming, Jim. Colonel Rogers, this is Captain Marshall. How do you do, sir? Good evening, sir. The colonel rode all the way from New York. Rode, I flew. There was daylight between me and that saddle most of the way. Mr. Parsons.